Hello. Welcome to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, please subscribe. In this video, we will be studying a case decided by the Supreme Court written by Justice Leonin. The case is Lanuza v. BF Corporation, promulgated on October 1, 2014. The issue in this case is whether the petitioners, former directors of Shangri-La Corporation, should be made parties to the arbitration proceedings between BF and Shangri-La. Petitioners were members of the board of directors of Shangri-La. Respondents, on the other hand, are domestic corporations involved in legal conflict. Shangri-La contracted BF to construct its multi-level parking structure along Edza. BF was able to complete the construction but Shangri-La failed to pay. Eventually, BF filed a collection complaint against Shangri-La and the members of its board of directors namely Alfredo Ramos, Rufo Coleaco, Antonio Albies, Gerardo Lanusa Jr., Maximo Licaoco III, and Benjamin Ramos. The case was filed with the regional trial court. BF alleged that the Shangri-La's directors were in bad faith in directing Shangri-La's affairs. Therefore, they should be held jointly and severally liable with Shangri-La for its obligations as well as for the damages that BF Corporation incurred as a result of Shangri-La's default. Eventually, the parties were directed to submit their dispute to arbitration. Petitioners filed their comment in the arbitration proceedings, praying that they be excluded from the arbitration proceedings for being non-parties to Shangri-La's and BF Corporation's agreement. They alleged that they had resigned as members of Shangri-La's board of directors as of July 15, 1991. The trial court issued an order directing service of demands for arbitration upon all defendants in BF Corporation's complaint including the petitioners. The trial court issued an order directing service of demands for arbitration upon all defendants in BF Corporation's complaint including the petitioners. According to the trial court, Shangri-La's directors were interested parties who must also be served with a demand for arbitration to give them the opportunity to ventilate their side of the controversy, safeguard their interest and fend off their respective positions. On appeal, the Court of Appeals dismissed petitioner's petition for certiorari. The appellate court held that the petitioners were necessary parties in the arbitration proceedings. Hence, this petition before the Supreme Court. The petitioners argued that they cannot be held personally liable for corporate acts or obligations. They also argued that BF failed to establish fraud or bad faith on their part. And finally, they alleged that they are third parties to the contract between BF and Shangri-La. Basically, the petitioners invoked the doctrine of separate juridical personality. The corporation is a separate being, and nothing justifies BF Corporation's allegation that they are solidarity liable with Shangri-La. BF countered that the petitioners were implanted under Section 31 of the Corporation Code and that the petitioners are necessary parties to the arbitration proceedings. Remember that Section 31 makes directors solidarity liable for fraud, gross negligence, and bad faith. Petitioners are not really third parties to the agreement because they are being sued as Shangri-La's representatives under Section 31 of the Corporation Code. The petition must fail ruled the Supreme Court. Petitioners are necessary parties to the case. The court held, quote, when there are allegations of bad faith or malice against corporate directors or representatives, it becomes the duty of courts or tribunals to determine if these persons and the corporation should be treated as one. End of quote. The ruling is based on the doctrine of piercing of corporate veil, providing instances when the distinction between personalities of directors, officers, and representatives, and of the corporation, are disregarded. When corporate veil is pierced, the corporation and persons who are normally treated as distinct from the corporation are treated as one person, such that when the corporation is adjudged liable, these persons, too, become liable as if they were the corporation. 
among the persons who may be treated as the corporation itself under certain circumstances are its directors and officers. Without a trial, courts and tribunals have no basis for determining whether the veil of corporate fiction should be pierced. Courts or tribunals do not have such prior knowledge. Hence, when the directors, as in this case, are implicated in a case against a corporation, alleging malice or bad faith on their part in directing the affairs of the corporation, complainants are effectively alleging that the directors and the corporation are not acting as separate entities. In summary, the main principles discussed in this case are the doctrine of separate juridical personality, the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil, and the liabilities of directors and officers. Important lessons on arbitration law was also discussed in this case. Relevant to our lesson, however, is that when there are allegations of bad faith or malice against corporate directors or representatives, it becomes the duty of courts or tribunals to determine if these persons and the corporation should be treated as one. While it is not necessary that the directors will be held solidarily liable because their liability, if any, will be determined based on evidence presented and proven, these directors cannot escape being implanted in the case in case of allegation of bad faith. We hope you learned something useful in this video. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page ECS Notes. You may also comment and share this video. Have a pleasant day.